Okay, this is an example of steady state diffusion and it's an application of fix first law. So for our example, we're gonna take a five millimeter thick sheet of palladium with a cross-sectional area of 0 0.2 meters squared. It's gonna be used as a steady state diffusional membrane for purifying hydrogen. So if you look at the figure below, what you can see is that there's, a, there's obviously some um, interest out there in purifying hydrogen so we could um, uh, you know, utilize things like fuel cells and, and uh, you know, potentially enable a hydrogen economy. Um, so what, what you see here is on the left-hand side, uh, um, uh, impure hydrogen, and it, it contacts this palladium film. Uh, there's a dissociation of the hydrogen with the whatever impure gases it's associated with, a diffusion of the hydrogen through the palladium film, and then a recombination of the hydrogen uh, on the other side. So the left-hand side in this case would be the high pressure side, the impure side, uh, and then the right-hand side would be the, the low pressure side or, and the pure side. So uh, for this problem, we're gonna assume that the high pressure side uh, has a, a concentration of 1.5 kilograms per cubic meter. And then on the low pressure side, we have a concentration of 0 0.3 kilograms per cubic meter. We're gonna assume the diffusion coefficient uh, at room temperature of hydrogen and palladium is given by uh, 10 to the minus nine meter squared per second. Okay, so we have four things that we wanna focus on finding. The first is just the diffusive flux through the membrane. The second is the mass of the hydrogen purified per hour. Uh, we also want to find out what would be the effect of making the membrane sheet thinner. And then finally, if we could alter the environment uh, to enhance the performance of the membrane, what would, what would we do to it? How would we purify hydrogen faster? So let's go ahead and solve each of these problems. First thing we should always do is draw a picture. So the simplified version here is that we have a palladium membrane with some thickness, 0 0.5, 0 0.005 meters. So that's five millimeters thick. Uh, on the high side, we have a concentration of 1.5 kilograms per cubic meter. On the low pressure side, we have a concentration of 0 0.3 kilograms per cubic meter. And I've just drawn a red arrow to indicate the direction that the diffusion is gonna occur. We know from Fick's first law that the diffusive flux J is gonna be given simply by negative of the diffusion coefficient D and times the concentration gradient, which is given by DC dx. So the only, uh, the only thing that's needed to be calculated here is the concentration gradient because the diffusion coefficient is already given in the problem. Um, so let's go ahead and calculate that. So we're going to assume a linear change in the concentration across the membrane. And if we do that, the concentration gradient can be computed as uh, dc dx is equal to delta c delta x uh, across the membrane where we only need to talk about the, on for, the to, for the numerator, the change in concentration across the membrane and for the denominator, which is just the thickness of the membrane. If we uh, plug these numbers in, we end up with a, a concentration gradient of negative 240 kilograms per cubic meter to the fourth. Okay, now we need to just substitute the, what we just calculated, the 240 kilograms per meter to the fourth and the diffusion coefficient D into the uh, fixed first law, which is what we do here. And we find that the diffusive flux is 2.4 times 10 to the minus seven kilograms per meter squared second. Okay, so that's the flux. We wanna then move to ask what's the, what's the uh, mass of the hydrogen purified per hour? Um, so this is basically con converting the diffusive flux into a mass flow rate. So that's easy to do. We just multiply the flux by the area that's uh, of interest, and that'll give the amount of material per unit time, which is the mass flow rate. Uh, so for the membrane that we have that has an area of 0 0.2 meters squared, we can write the mass flux um, as m dot equals the flux times the area. We plug in our values and we end up with a mass flow rate of 4.8 times 10 to the minus eight kilograms per second. Now we just need to convert this mass uh, flow rate, um, which is in units of kilogram per second, to units of kilograms per hour. This is easy to do, just multiply by 3,600. Uh, so we do that and we find that our mass flow rate per hour is 1.73 times 10 to the minus four kilograms per hour.
So the next question asked, what's the effect of making the membrane sheet thinner? Well, if the membrane sheet was thinner, the only quantity that's gonna change in this problem is the concentration gradient. That's the only place that the, that 0 .05, 0 0.005 meters shows up. Now we're gonna say, what if we shrink that? Well, recall that the concentration gradient is given by dc dx is equal to delta c over delta x. Well, the only thing that's gonna change now is that this denominator, delta x, is gonna get smaller as the membrane th thickness goes down. So a reduction in thickness is gonna result in an increase in the concentration gradient, which will result in an increase in the diffusive flux shown by Fick's first law. So if the membrane was thinner, we get increased diffusion. Okay, so our final question is, uh, how could you alter the environment to enhance the performance of this membrane? That means purify the hydrogen faster. So in part C, we showed that a thinner membrane would speed up purification. In this part, we wanna focus on what can we do to the environment to speed up diffusion? How can we change D? That's the only other term in the problem. So in this class, we're gonna consider D to take on an Arrhenius form given by um, D is equal to D naught, which is where D naught is just a pre-exponential factor that we're gonna treat as a constant in this class, times e to the negative qd over kt, where qd is the activation energy for diffusion, which is also considered to be a constant in this class. And the only other, vari uh, the only other variable is t, which is absolute temperature. K obviously is the Boltzmann constant and it doesn't change. So of the three things, d naught, qd, and t, only one of those is variable, temperature. So that's the only variable that we can actually alter uh, in the environment to change the diffusive process. Oops, what have I done? So from the exponential above, we can observe that an increase in temperature is gonna result in an increase in the diffusion co coefficient and a corresponding increase in the diffusion speed. So if you wanna speed up diffusion, then you raise the temperature. So that's, that's all that there is for this example. Um, and that concludes the, the sort of the steady state diffusion discussion.